It's, it's Rusty, Rusty Ferret's tutorial time. Well, hello and welcome to the Rusty Ferret podcast tutorial time. <laughs> That's what I'm calling it. So I know over time, you're only seeing my hands today, I'm afraid. Um, a lot of people have asked me about my mitered square blanket that I'm making, which I am using to use up scraps basically or like ends of projects but it's kind of taken on a life form of its own and I will tell you a bit about that later um but I, in this tutorial I would like to show you how to pick up um and add in a mitered square and give you the maths that I'm working with so that you can make your own um the good thing about a mitered square blanket is you can use whatever thickness yarn you want whatever thickness needles you would like and however many stitches you would like. If you would like to have um, a five stitch by five stitch mitered square, that's cool. Mine is a 25 by 25, so 50 stitches in total. And I am using four ply yarn and I believe these are three millimeter needles. I am a really loose knitter, so um, adjust your needle size accordingly. <laughs> so first, what you're gonna need is needles in the size of your choosing i'm using double pointed needles because i find them easier is that why i'm not really sure i'm i'm normally a circular needle kind of gal um but i use these i, I don't know why i just like them um a stitch marker the cuter the better mine is a flux capacitor that i got from a kit i can't remember but it's cute and of course you're gonna need some yarn these are my yarn selections. Um, I pick yarn based on, that's too thick, that's not gonna work. Um, yarn based on what when I finished a project. So this is from my Lysening shawl that I have just recently finished. And this is from my Effervescent jumper, again, that I recently finished. These are literally just some scraps that I've got lying about. Um, I do find that with my tension and my needle size and the fingering weight yarn, I usually can get a square out of about five grams. So this is probably enough for me. Um, again, you'll just get up to knowing how much yarn you need. Um, I certainly won't be using all of these. <laughs> so the first thing you're gonna do is get your blanket. Now I have already started my blanket and I will tell you in a minute, or I'll tell you a bit later on, um, how you start one of these but it's the same it's it's fairly similar this is probably going to look really awkward because I'm doing it on a worktop um, and I usually do this sat on my sofa currently I'm working on a diagonal starting with my very first square and then the next two and then adding them on on the diagonal so doing it like a row so you can see here I have two so I need one here and then one here etc my blanket is going to be 400 squares long by 400 squares wide it's an arbitrary number choose whatever you like um it now means that because i've been doing it on the diagonal my rows are going to get shorter of squares so um it'll go down to a point i hope that all makes sense again there was no reason behind it um personal preference <laughs> I also like to choose a square where the colour is going to match, so I probably wouldn't put that, not match, but like contrast. I probably wouldn't put that there because you've got blue and a blue. Um, I might put it further up here, oh. between the green and the brown, again just to give a bit of contrast. So I'm going to start with my effervescent yarn because I have a lot of it. and. <laughs> I just want to can I just say I'm working in my shed <laughs> it's not finished but uh, we're getting there I will say that one of my DPNs is quite bent this one um, and I'm pretty sure they're not the same size either so what you're gonna do is get the needle of your choice needle of your choice <laughs> needles of your choice and I just like to make a slip knot to start off did I do that really fast so I just like to make a slip knot and then start picking up stitches along this edge here first. 
So, I try and get as close to the original knot as possible because I always find that by the time I get to the center stitch, I haven't picked up enough and I have to kind of fudge it. Thankfully, my ear squares are very forgiving and it's all good. So, I'm just gonna go along, pick up stitches and put them onto my needle. I should say that you're gonna pick up one stitch for every row along here. I think this is gonna be really hard to show, but I'll do my best, not that one. So see where, can you see the V here? I'm gonna pick up those two here, so stick my needle through. And knit. Next V. I often don't catch both legs of the V's. There's no judgment here. It's a safe space. I've got this microphone really close to my face. So I'm going to go along and pick up however many stitches that I've decided the size of my one side of my mitered square is going to be. So for me, that is 25 stitches. So I will see you in 25 stitches time. Magically, I have 25 stitches. Um, I haven't managed to do that before. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Next, I'm going to put the stitch marker in because that's you at your halfway point. I You don't have to use a stitch marker. I just find I do this when I'm mindlessly sitting watching the TV. Um, so a stitch marker gives me a kind of visual indication where I need to do my decreases. So after that, once your stitch marker's in, <laughs> I have to say I'm not a, an ends as you go kind of person. You're going to do the exact same along the edge here. So again, we're just going in between those knots. So can you see a knot, stitch, knot. You might have to pull it a little bit. Stitch, knot, stitch. And just go all the way along again. Heading for 25. So 50 in total. As I said, you really don't have to do 25 and 25. You could do 10 and 10. You do want an even number though. Actually, do you want an even number? <laughs> I'm sure there's a formula to this. Hang on. Yeah, you want an even number so that when you get to your last stitches, you're going to knit the two together. So you get one and then that's where you kind of pull your yarn through. So again, I'll just keep doing with this. So you have picked up all your stitches, whichever number you want. Again, as I said, 50 for me, so 25 and 25. Um, you're going to work the, well, I like to work these in a uh, garter stitch. I just like the texture of garter stitch for this. You could absolutely do stockinette stitch. Um, stocking stitch, stockinette, whatever. Um, again, it's kind of a lazy, mindless project for me. So knitting every row just works for me. So what I'm going to do is flip this round and it get, it's getting cumbersome with the size of my blanket. Ugh. And I'm just going to knit this back row. So this, as you can see where all the joins are, is my wrong side and this is my right side, the pretty side. So we're just going to go and knit, knit, knit. So that's you set up and ready to go. Going forward, every wrong side row, you're gonna just knit all the stitches. 
on every right side row you're going to knit to the two stitches before your marker and knit two together slip the marker and the two stitches after you're going to slip slip knit those stitches i'm very lazy and i knit two together and knit two together either side of the stitch marker um it does make a nicer decrease if you do the opposite so they're either facing together or facing away but again lazy project it's a blanket i'm all good doing the decreases and i'll show you on this green one here doing the decreases gives you this kind of spine up the middle and you're bringing your square back in to its point so it, this is another thing i really like is your rows are constantly getting shorter every row like every right side row you're decreasing two stitches so every row on your right side is getting shorter by two stitches which is a win in my book <laughs> so i'm gonna just i'm um, quickly knit to the center stitches and we will we will talk again <laughs> Again, we're just just knitting lazy lazy I haven't added a square to this in forever I also like this as a record of all the projects that I've done so um, as I was saying it's taken on a life of its own I was just using this for scrap like yarn that I had but then I decided that um, I would only use a color once every color once so like I wouldn't use this ball to finish it up I would take one square off of that and then it would go back in the stash for a project or just live in the stash let's be honest okay so I am getting to the last two stitches and as I said I'm just going to knit them together knit two together slip my stitch marker and knit two together as I said, whatever two stitch decrease you prefer. Um, I know a lot of people like to be consistent with their decreases facing the right ways. I only do that if I'm told to. <laughs> um, and we'll just scoot along. So I'm just going to sit and work on this um, until we're kind of ready to finish because as I said on the wrong side rows we're just going to knit and on the right side rows you're going to decrease by two either side of your stitch marker that's it so I'll come back to you later so through the power of video editing and a whole day later <laughs> um, I am at the stage where we're going to be finishing this off soon so let me just quickly whiz through these last couple of rows so we're knitting the last two stitches together slip in that stitch marker that I've got caught every time <laughs> knitting them together just a plain knit row because it's the wrong side I'm going to actually remove my stitch marker at this point because there's not many stitches left and at this point I need to be paying attention. So so what we're going to do with the last four stitches is now I, this is how I do it. Again, other people might have a different method. Knit the first two together. Knit the last two together. If I can get my needle in. And then I'm just going to cast off by putting the first stitch over that second stitch. And then I'm going to break my yarn, leaving a bit of a tail for weaving in, and pull that bad boy out. And that is your mitre square done! It looks a bit, <laughs> it looks a bit long, <laughs> just because it'll block out or it'll settle itself. 
So that is how I knit and attach a miter square. If you are starting a miter square blanket from scratch, you're going to want to know how to do that, right? And it's dead simple. It's the exact same principle, apart from you're starting with nothing. So let's go back to my very first square here. I'm going to... The blanket is so unruly. So this was my first square here. This one, the green, the green and yellow one. And what I did was I cast on, using whatever cast on method you prefer, I think I did, yeah, a long tail cast on. I cast on my 25 stitches, put a marker, cast on my 25 stitches, and then carried on as I just did, so on the wrong sides, I was knitting every row. On the right sides, I was knitting two stitches before the marker, doing a decrease, slipping that marker, next two stitches, decrease, knitting the last of the stitches, doing that every even row until you get one square. Then this is what I mean, I was going diagonal. So then I started with this square here. So what I did was I cast on 25 stitches, put my marker, picked up 25 stitches continue this one here I picked up 25 stitches and I cast on 25 stitches do as follows and that's going to be the same for every I nearly fell over <laughs> that's going to be the same for every square going up and that the same for this one is going to be the same going along so that is a quick tutorial on how you do a miter square blanket or how I'm doing a miter square blanket. I will go and take some footage of this in its full glory so that you can see. It's a really nice project to use up yarn with. As I say, you don't have to be as, <laughs> I don't even know the word, only using one color one time um, as I am. You can just use your yarn till it's finished. You can also do like various patterns as in each square you know do a color coordination um i like the random feel of it just because it's easy um and it's really cool to see different yarns um knit up so like sometimes if i'm doing a sample i will pop it into my blanket just to see how it looks so yeah um let me know if you have started an epic blanket project and it's still on the go um, let me know if you're going to give this a go. If you have any questions, just give me a shout. I will answer them as best as possible. Um, and good luck. <laughs> Bye. Mm -hmm.